Hi guys, welcome to season number three of the Wilderness Living Challenge. We have dinner for today. It's gonna to be a skunk. That's right. So if you're not familiar with the challenge, the Wilderness Living Challenge, basically we weigh in at the beginning and we weigh out. And the idea is not to lose any weight at all. Sounds easy, but it's pretty tricky. So this is no starvation challenge. So any item you can find, and today, this is the only one we managed to get. It's a skunk. So we're gonna stew this guy up, turn him into a meal. Okay, so if you guys don't know the Wilderness Living Challenge, you gotta weigh in and you gotta weigh out. And the idea is not to lose any weight because this is not a starvation challenge. 144 even. 144 even. Yeah? All right, pan out to make sure everybody knows it's still me. That's pounds. 144 pounds. All right, Bob's turn. 157.4. Day one. That'll change. <laughs> you planning on losing some weight here, Bob? I have no doubt, man. I have no doubt. Good enough. All right, we'll see how we do. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome to season number three of the Wilderness Living Challenge. If you're not familiar with the Wilderness Living Challenge, essentially what we do is go out into the wild with no food and we try to live off the land without losing any body weight whatsoever. So tomorrow morning we're gonna weigh in and we're gonna try to maintain our body weight. My guest, my host, I, I can't say I'm a guest here because obviously we're in Texas if you can't tell by the cactus behind me. We have Bob Hansler. Bob Hansler has a YouTube channel, Bob Hansler. You look him up, <laughs> you'll have no problems finding him. We're on the same page, aren't we? Heck yeah, but yeah, you look up anything in survival, it's gonna be Woodbeard and Bob Hansler. That's right. So what do we got here? We got some live traps. Heck yeah, we're gonna so, start setting them out. So what the idea is, tomorrow morning, we wanna eat our first meal. So what we're gonna do is set some live traps. What are we looking for? Everything. Possum, raccoon, armadillo, squirrel, ringtail cat, uh, maybe a skunk if we're really unlucky. And since we're in Texas, Mexico border, uh, chupacabra. <laughs> we're always trapping chupacabra. So is the chupacabra like the Sasquatch that we have back home? It's like Sasquatch's dog, like Toto. Okay. But hairless and it likes goat blood or something like that. More manageable then? Like a, like a, like a better meal, like a smaller meal? If it gets smaller in a trap, post. it'll make a meal. All right, sounds yeah. good, man. And we're going big. Obviously, we're texting going big. There's other big animals that are going to be on our menu this year. We are looking for a hog. Yeah? Wild hogs all over the place out here, so. What are the chances we get a hog? I think we're in high 50s. Things are moving, there's a lot of grass out here. Nice. We'll see. So so a hog what, we we're talking 150 pounds? 150 is a, a normal average size. Largest one off the property, pushing 600 pounds. 600 pounds. Can that's... you imagine what it's gonna be like to live off the land if you have a 600 pound animal? I mean, that's insanity. You spend Insanity. a lot of time trying to defend against other things wanting to eat your 600 pound hog. But yeah, <laughs> you're, you're gonna be living high on the hog, literally. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man, so we're gonna set these traps out. We got some... Chicken bones, man. That was that was last night's meal. We recycle everything out here. Old chicken bones, the creatures like them too. So... Yeah, and if you wanna count that as cheat number one, you're welcome to. Uh, you know, we're, we, are, we want to start off with a meal. Last year, we didn't successfully trap our beaver on the first day. It took us a couple days to do that. We ate minnows and that wasn't fun. No. No, no I, I don't want to go starving. This this is not a starvation challenge. I've seen other channels do that. We're not we're not going to do that. Welcome no. to Texas. Um, we're if going we don't big. trap something, then uh, you can eat cactus. I don't really want to eat cactus. <laughs> you get tired of that real fast. We're going big. But let's do it. We're going big. Let's do it, man. All right, let's load up these traps. Let's get a rock and tomorrow we eat. All right, so I try and put these things up underneath the uh, trees, up under limbs. It makes it less likely for creatures to come mess with them. Because in years past, the pigs would come through, they smash it, they knock it sideways, they crush the traps up as much as possible. Even if you put chains on them, they're gonna drag them out of the ground, throw them around. So trap location is important. Up against logs, a lot of times, it's gonna actually lead them in there. It's gonna make it where they're less likely to knock the trap and set it off before they get inside. Cool. Wait, what do you think the chances are that we get something out of these three? What do we got, three traps? One and three. One and three? 30%, 30%, yep. So 100%? We got three traps, 30% each. 
Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Let's go set a couple more, man. <laughs> Every time you want the animals to do what you want them to do, they're gonna do the exact opposite. Yeah. As soon as we turn off the uh, camera, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they'll all they'll all start doing backflips for us, you know. Yeah, we're sweating for it. <laughs> this humidity's killing <laughs> me, man. All right, man. I noticed some up in the tree there, yeah. right, right there. That's one of our feeders. This is uh, down by the river, so it's it's pretty much called the turkey feeder. But we run these all year round. They go off two, three times a day. Just keep the batteries going, keep corn going out here. You know, it, it just depends. Every year's different. Sometimes we get the rain, sometimes we don't. We like to feed our creatures, so. So that's meant to, that's meant to attract animals, feed them? Oh yeah, we got the squirrels, the turkeys love it. Deer come through, uh, everything gets to benefit off of it. So if you're talking about like SHTF, you know, scenarios, you gotta have a little bit of corn on hand and then you get the meat on hand, right? Oh man, if you had that, that's, <laughs> that's two bags of corn. That'd be a hundred pounds of corn up in there. 100 bags of corn. 100 pounds. Right, 100 pounds, okay. And then, but yeah. you can attract 600 pounds of hog. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right, let's do the math. Absolutely, yeah, there's some trade-off there. There's some trade-off. And what you don't see over on the other side, if I spin around here, we got the truck in the background. There's a, uh, there's a stand, you know, up in the tree right there, overlooking everything. So you could pretty much camp out here. You guys have, see they have seasons here. Uh, for what you call like real animals. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You know, like, game animals. Game animals. <laughs> the real animals are like deer and turkey. Yeah. But then there's a whole bunch of other animals that we don't consider, you guys don't consider by law necessarily animals. Like no, no. Raccoon they're and... They're fur bearing. They're fur bearing they're and, and they're in the Canada they're protected, but here they're not. So. With, with these temperatures, with the amount of fruit and vegetables and everything else out here, these populations get crazy. So you have to be able to manage them. Yeah. So, but we're in the south zone right now. You miss turkey season by like... <laughs> that much I know. bummer because they're going to be all around us after a while it's true so uh but if, if you want if any place you want to come and survive texas is the place oh yeah right yeah, just because you got the, you got the animals you got you got the sauna that happens <laughs> whether you like it or not exactly yeah. pretty wild out here pretty wild all right man so we're on the edges of the san antonio river the infamous san antonio river you got monsters underwater Ready to be caught. Those are the gar. Like if you haven't seen Bob's video on the gar, the, the, the ones that make you jump, does that, is, that, that, is that what it is? Not just jump, they'll slam the <laughs> canoe up in the air. They're pretty, they're pretty wild. And uh, we'll fish with those with what? We got big four, five, six hot hooks, uh, 200 pound test. You know, we're out here, 13, 13 foot long alligators come out of here once in a while. We get the alligator gar, long nose gar, in excess of 10 foot at times. Integrity, 13 so, feet of gar. Yeah, we'll give it a go. All right, so we got another big trap here. It's a uh, yeah, scaled up version, let's say, of a raccoon trap. A hog trap. <laughs> a hog trap. So the intention is to actually catch a live hog in the trap and uh, keep it alive so we can eat it, yeah? Absolutely, or five. <laughs> you can get or, five in there? I can get up to probably a dozen. A dozen, you can get a dozen hog in there at the same time. That's yeah. something. All right, I, I, so I, Bob said, you know, it works really simple. And I'm like, yeah, okay, it works really simple. I don't know how I would build a hog trap. So I'm interested in how the mechanism works. So we're gonna come in and have a look. Yeah, this is pretty simple. We've had several hog traps over the years. Different trigger systems work pretty well. But this is a bump gate. And the idea is that we put the corn back in the back. The hogs find their way in and uh, they'll, they'll move around things. They're not bumping into trees all the time. All right, so they come in, you get four or five of them in here and they get so excited that at some point, one of them bumps this gate and that releases a bar and it shuts down. And so there's nothing that actually keeps it locked. It's got a spring on here and there they stay. So that's just the bungee cord. That's just a bungee cord. It used to have a stainless steel, nice, uh, nice spring on it, but we're in South Texas and nothing lasts in South Texas humidity. So it's bungee cord. So all you got in there is corn, just just some corn, man. Corn in the bottom. Some people put molasses, uh, Kool-Aid, uh, first child. <laughs> I don't know. Depends how hungry you are. Depends <laughs> on how hungry you are. Oh, and these and these these pigs down here taste amazing. Uh, coming from West Texas, the pigs in the desert were were sorry sad creatures, but the ones in South Texas, they taste better than anything you can get from the store. And these are these are completely nuisance animals. Completely. Uh, you would, God, I wish I could show you exactly what they can do overnight. So when they move through, uh, entire fields, entire acres will be completely piled up. 
plowed up completely. The, the entire road is gone, entire trees are uprooted. Uh, even back in the mountains in the rhyolite rocks where rock bar would take me three weeks to rip something out they'd have it out and gone we got, so we'll talk more about if we catch them we're going to talk more about the difference between a javelina and a hog because there's, there's a very <laughs> there's a very important distinction there but we're going to save that for later we get one we're going to talk about it more but you guys gotta you gotta know there's a big difference between a wild hog and a javelina just these, for now right here <laughs> these these fence panels those have their boat out let them put them on like that there's a reason they're all bowed out and they've been bent back. So when those pigs get in here and they slam, these things bow out. And metal breaks, they're big creatures. It's the smallest, they're the size yeah. of your pinky. Well, I want to be able to get things down to like five pounds, five pound cats. I want to be able to catch them. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's it. And then your swivels are usually good for about 200 pounds. Uh, depending on what we're going after, sometimes we'll get like the five and eight X. Uh, some super strength stuff that you'd have to have bolt cutters to actually break the hook because uh, I've had I've had hooks that you can put in a, a vise and hit with a hammer. Is that the weight? Yeah, if we're gonna put three weights in each one. We're reusing these off of uh, old sayings. People take cast nets and they chunk them out in the rivers and stuff and they get caught on trees. Wow. See where the turtle came in? I just heard it and the camera missed it. I can see the bubbles. We'll throw some hooks out. So that's dinner? We'll get them later, yeah. What kind of turtle would that be? That's going to be a redder slider. And those are not from around here? So those they're... are hugely invasive. The, the most invasive turtle in the entire world. They rip up everything, so... We'll make a meal out of it and take one more out of the environment. So we're a little short on light here. We're almost at last little bit of light here. What we're gonna do is set some lines for our uh, backup plan for tomorrow morning. So Bob's got these giant weights rigged up and he's got giant hooks rigged up to a swivel and another giant hook. You see these, they're meant for shark. <laughs> we're hopefully gonna catch a shark, something like seven foot long shark. But actually when we came down here, there were two turtle in the water. So there's a pretty good chance we could catch one of those two turtles, if not catfish. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna toss these out. We've got some uh, crawfish. I gotta use the proper terminology. I'd call them crayfish. I was in Canada, same thing. And uh, tomorrow we're gonna hopefully get some bluegill. They will work really good for bait. So let's toss these out. We've got a little PVC uh, sunk into the dirt. Uh, way in deep and that will hold the line and we can leave these set perfectly legal here in Texas to leave these set lines We're just gonna toss them out with some bait and tomorrow uh, tomorrow morning tomorrow afternoon we're gonna come check see what we got So these PVC pipes here and there's just a hole drilled in the top so We sink these down <laughs> Till there's what a foot left Yeah, they can sink down just just with the weight of us, we can probably push them four foot into the ground. <laughs> Sand. Oh, that's, on, that's crazy. It's down five feet at least. Yep. Oh, take our line and wrap her up. I don't want to weigh perfectly good. Crawdads put them in oh, the oh, water. right there. Hmm? You guys see that? Big swirl. Uh, already hungry. Big swirl. A four or five footer? <laughs> I don't know. This way. Quality bait. You quality, catch. quality food item. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's some meat in there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what, like, like I said, trade offs is what it is. So uh, a lot of times when you're baiting out crawdads, you'll see people put it into the tail, but that's if they're baiting up for like getting bass and wanting to throw out and rod, rod back in. Look at this. So there, try and go through this. You want to go through both sides of the shell. And hook them up and there you go that is a big crawdad yeah, so yep yep yeah. second one go ahead and hook it in through the bottom and so it might seem like that's a that's just a huge piece of bait but i guarantee you there is a fish out there that will take him or a turtle yeah or a turtle yeah yeah <laughs> they'll take the turtle take them part piece by piece but we'll still catch him but ideally, bluegill, 
Crawdads work too. Oh, 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 got some on the line. On the line already? Yep, man. Ready? Yeah, yeah. Catfish? Yeah, yeah. catfish. Right. Couple pounder. There we go, and that was on uh, catfish bait. We're gonna have to sit out here now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good sign. <laughs> it's a good like sign. We, we say this, and then for like for the next five days, we don't catch a single thing. <laughs> Jinx it real bad. But heck yeah, guys. We gotta throw that in the fridge for tomorrow morning. I guess we could leave it on the line too, eh? Nice cat. What's no. that, about a pound? That's a pound, pound and a half. Yeah. No, you can't put it on the line here. This is this is just bait for something else. So if I put that on a stringer, uh, within an hour, he might take him whole or you'll come back and he'll thrash for five, 10 seconds, that's it. You'll bring it back in and half a fish will be gone. So in this river, this is still bait size. So we take him back, we eat him, or we throw him back. So. So what's I the call? What's the call? Dude, that we're gonna eat this tomorrow. All right. This is this is breakfast. All right, man. That counts, man. Cause a fish in the hand is better than a, a river full of fish. <laughs> awesome. He's, he's ours. Wicked. Hurrah. Dude. He's not around, or anything. He gone? Yeah. All right, man, line set. We're all ready for tomorrow. We've got to set a couple more live traps around uh, the property, and then we're hopefully going to be dining tomorrow. Uh, this is one of our extra traps we set out yesterday, nothing, so that's a bust here. Uh, yeah, that's why we set multiple traps though, because you're never guaranteed. So I got our other big massive trap, this thing will catch everything, you see how huge it is, I can fit in this trap, so, but uh, empty, we gotta have multiple traps running, that's the, that's the lesson here. Big trap. Big trout, big animal. But unfortunately, nothing in here. All right, so yeah, we're just down at the creek here. Uh, Bob's got some traps set uh, already. Um, most of them don't have bait because we pulled the bait, uh, or pulled the product of the bait, I guess the crawfish yesterday, and we used them for bait. <laughs> so now we're just gonna rebait them, put some dog food in there. Yeah, I know it's cheating, but so what? We gotta get started somehow. And uh, you know, when you're going out surviving in nature, you don't really start with nothing. So the idea is we're just gonna re rebate all these traps, uh, see what we have in them. If we have any crawfish for a backup plan, if we don't have anything else in the other traps, which we're about to get ready, set, go check. And uh, you know, hopefully that pans out. Otherwise we're gonna be kind of scrambling, backpedaling, but uh, we do have a potential to get turtle. We also have the potential to get a mammal, a possum or a raccoon or something like that. It would be nice to get something big. Right? Numbers game, man. Set more traps. Yeah. Get more food. Yeah, man. And uh, I know you've never done a survival challenge before, like when you've gone hungry, just depending on food, right? Not so much of a challenge. No. Um, just kind no, of incidentally. Of just getting something and learning how to trap something different. Just being bored out on the trail, 10 days out on the trail, you get tired of spam. <laughs> you become really good at trapping things, you know? Yeah, but depending on it, for you guys out there who, who haven't gone without meals, it's completely different when you're actually hungry. You become extremely motivated to find food and you become attuned to finding it and looking for it everywhere. So eyes are always peeled. We're going to be carrying a gun around just to make sure that we're ready if something should appear. So it's all on the menu, guys. So I checked up two traps uh, that we had just set around camp. Two out of five or six. Yeah, yeah. and so far nothing. <laughs> yeah. And I boat, that's the bait's out there in the forest. That, that's true. Yeah. All right. So anyway, we're gonna. What are we gonna do? Set some crawfish traps. These are uh, pyramid traps. Got two of these, and then a handful of the G's crawdad traps. These guys catch a lot of the good bait, and we want good bait for catching big things out of the river. So a crawf like we're gonna catch crawfish in there. Big is crawdads. That, is that it? And then 
cichlids, uh, bluegill, up to about that big. Right. And uh, even though that seems like a big fish, that's bait in our river. Yeah, and so the, uh, the bluegill are good for, you're saying like the bigger stuff, right? Eating, the catfish. Gar love it, gar. catfish will eat it full. Yeah. Just uh, the better bait, the better fish It's better catch. bait, so bluegill is a better bait than, than uh, crawdads, crawfish? Yeah, uh, crawdads, throw them in, you'll get uh, freshwater drum, also known as gas ragu. Okay. So big fish, and they like to run, but it's a different way of fishing, different method. We're doing throw lines right now. Yeah. We'll try and get some gas for good after a while. Okay. And when you, you, we're just eating dog food, so yeah, we're cheating a little bit. Twin pet. <laughs> this is to start out with. Once we catch them, uh, once we eat some crawdads, we can throw what's left of the crawdads back in the traps, and you just kind of start to cycle up. Once it warms up, two hours is all it takes to fill this thing full of fish and crawdads. Oh, and, and this year's snakes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So get ready to catch some snakes, man. Yeah, the snakes, the snakes is going to be a weird one for me because we don't have, well, we have snakes, but not snakes. <laughs> we, we have snakes, man. <laughs> you guys got real snakes. So if we don't trap something, uh, we'll, eat, we'll eat a lot of snakes out here. So, I don't anyway. know if I'm looking forward to that or not. It's on my list of things to do, so I guess I am excited. It's it's top ten meats, but it's not it's not top five. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So. so that one was set a couple days ago. Bob had him set, and got just a little minnow in there. That's it. <laughs> so we got to rebate this. There we go, rebate, retry. All right, I'm gonna keep going. Empty, no bait. <laughs> Is that unusual? Uh, they were actually cleared out last night. Oh, fishing. oh right, we used, the yeah, we used, this is what you used for fishing yesterday. So we grabbed the crawdads, we threw them back in because you don't want to leave these traps out, out of the water. Right. Because a raccoon can really really try to mess them up. Did you have bait in these last night? Not at all. No bait, eh? Every okay. once in a while they'll catch something on their own though, so. Yeah. We'll catch something. We're gonna get something. Bob's got all these basically set out here. And uh, we're just gonna rebate them now. And that's gonna be our backup plan because I don't think we're gonna get enough calories in just uh, crayfish, crawfish. But it's good to have a backup plan. Yeah, this one's good. Get you a couple in there. One, two, three, four, five. Little minnows. Uh, one little guy. Got a couple in here. Good start. Yeah, you want to fill these up or? Yep. Get some more bait in there. Then get some more friends after a while. Let's we'll see what we can do. What? Yeah. You got a pile in there. You got about a dozen there. So that's plan B. We're gonna go off to plan A and check those big traps. Hopefully we got a big mammal in there that we can eat. That would be good, because we can eat breakfast and lunch and dinner and the whole works. Just coming up on our pig trap here. Corn's all still there. That's not a good sign, is it? That means that not even anything came in it. So. Or, or it means that everything's down at the mulberry trees. Eat all, the mulberries. They're all trapped. Yeah, it's true. The, so. the, we're, we're just off the the way from the mulberry bushes. Maybe they're uh, maybe they're down there at the mulberry trees eating mulberries. So we're a couple hundred yards away. Let's go to where the food is. So there you go. We're so far we're empty-handed. <laughs> so far we got nothing to eat. I don't know if you guys know what that feels like, but it doesn't feel good. It's not a good thought because we're we're gonna be scrambling if we don't get anything soon. But we got we got more traps. We got more traps. We got two, three down there. We got three down there, and then we have uh, two throw lines. We chunked out last night and uh, there were a lot of turtles. It so. would be weird if we didn't get anything. It'd be weird but look at the temperature, look at what's happening. It's the middle of May or first of May. Down here it should be 95 degrees sunny skies. We're at overcast 70 degrees. When the temperature changes you can't make the animals get in the trap you know. And that's and that's cold for here. So yeah, <laughs> this is chilly. I brought my weather with me. 100% <laughs> Welcome to the subtropics. So, another trap, empty. You hear a turkey goblin over there, but not again, man. Not yet. We got two traps left. The, the corn's still there too. The corn's so still there. It's not that they came in and the trap set off. Yeah, and the bait's still hanging up top here. So, looking like we're gonna be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> still a river. I see something in the trap. Yep. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, we're gonna eat. What do we got? Oh no. Oh no. Did we get a skunk? <laughs> yeah, we did. Oh, the other trap set off too. I would not get that close to that sucker. Yeah. <laughs> we got skunked. All right. Well, you said you were hungry. <laughs> <laughs> What other the luck? Welcome to season three. Welcome right? to season three. <laughs> we're, we're cursed now. <laughs> Out of all of those traps, we got a skunk. No laughing, we're gonna Start eat that. <laughs> we got a skunk in the trap. So the question is, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna eat it? Are we gonna try to let it go? It's a big dilemma because we actually have nothing else to eat so far. We might want to check the fishing lines first and see if that's something that would be worthwhile instead of this guy. But uh, it's a consideration if we if we uh, if we don't have any fish. I'm thinking about it. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is meat. This is the moment of truth. We basically have our set fishing lines. If there's nothing on here that's substantial, what are we eating? Mulberries. We're under the mulberry trees at least. <laughs> We're going to be eating mulberries. Berry eaters. And, and our bait instead of crawfish. That's about it. Yeah. It's not looking good, guys. It's really not looking good. Yeah. All right, let's go have a look. Vegetarian, but not by choice. <laughs> this is uh, line one of two. And Bob's gonna pull it in. He says there's no, there's no weight on it, not, nothing there, so. Not yet. We got a stick, that's good. Good news there. Good looking stick. No bait. So something got on it? Wrapped it around a little bit. Yep, it's all wrapped up. No bait. So these things are biting. They're It'd be biting. Bad if, uh, I think we're. Bait on it. I think we're o for like. <laughs> <laughs> o for ten, something like that with traps and lines. We got one for ten, man. There's a striped creature back there. <laughs> I don't know if we're counting that skunk yet. We're still on the fence as to what we're gonna do with that skunk. Yeah. It is what it is. When you want the food, it doesn't always be there. It's always there. One more line. It was tangled up in the trees, actually. I don't feel anything on there. Oh no. All the bait's gone, both hooks empty. Both hooks empty, no bait, nothing. We're totally skunked. And that, I mean literally, totally skunked. Not messing around now, we got uh, Official out of the store catfish bait stuff reeks. Good, good bait. Whew, pretty smelly because we're desperate now. <laughs> we're we're hungry now. <laughs> Did you get one yet? I need another one for another hook. Yeah, wash your hands after this. It's all good. Yeah. Liver and cheese. That Some, ought to work. Someone's gonna be hungry in there. If not, would you eat this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just like a Slim Jim. Mmm. Yummy. Right, line out. All right, line out. And for the record, last night we actually lost the catfish. <laughs> we, we I, I lost the catfish. Yeah, it got back. Got back in the water. It wasn't a monster though, so. <laughs> it would have been good to eat this morning though. Absolutely. Yeah, that would have <laughs> been, been a good nugget. It's a land of plenty. You either have the food or you don't. There's a lot of big creatures out here. <laughs> You're still positive. <laughs> I'm positive. I feel good right now. We had that sausage and, 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 and uh, brisket last night. Hit the spot. I still have that going through me. So. For now. For now, it's limited. For now, yeah, we'll see in two or three hours, but we're about to go do some berry picking, and yeah. uh, that'll be a good sugar, sugar high. We're pretty close to these lines, so if we hear something breaking and snapping and everything going wrong, run over here and pull up, hopefully lunch. Yeah, for sure. So we got the mulberry trees back here. We got a plan to knock a bunch out and make a a side a Several side dish things. to our main skunk dish. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. The skunk's still there. We we're trying to decide what we want to do with it. It might be a little bit of a chore to clean it up. I think at this point, with calories still in our system, we can we can afford to to go ahead and probably release that. You yeah. Know, later on, if you were starving to death, absolutely, meat is meat. But. All right. Striped creature might have another life on this one and just be lucky. So day, day one's not desperation, in other words, the skunk is going to get 
a free ride. Which could be a mistake. But <laughs> it's true. But, uh, we might, by day five, you might actually want the skunk we'll back. We'll call that hindsight, you know? <laughs> So the lesson learned, I think, out of all this is to set more traps, right? You never, never go wrong with more traps. Numbers game, always. Yeah. And, and so around a campfire, anytime that you're down, uh, any, anything that you can set up more lines and, and set more traps, that's, that's what your time needs to be taken up with. Yeah. Actively hunting happens when you're going from trap to trap and where you're going mm -hmm. to go set out traps. Uh, you don't just walk around the forest with a gun or rifle or, or with a bow or something. You wait, right? Yeah. And so you come across creatures mm -hmm. when they're going to the trap or, or when you're going to go set other traps. Uh, efficiency. Yeah. That's and what we're all about. A lot of people made comments on season two about how we, it seemed like we caught and kept a lot of, <laughs> a lot of things. And we did end up with a surplus at the end, but you, when you have it, you take it is the lesson. Like yeah. you, you don't pass up a meal that's easy just because you have too much. I mean, nobody in their, in their modern life has uh, just one meal on hand at all times. They have freezers and fridges full of food, and then especially you know, if you know anybody from like the Great Depression times, yeah. uh, they always have extra freezers. Oh, they, they, they've they, lived it, yeah, and, and they're ready. And they they've got it all stored up in their pantries for for the hard times. But even even when you look at like the Lewis and Clark expeditions over hundred years ago, those guys, each one of those guys, ate over nine pounds of meat a day. Each man over nine pounds of meat. And you you eat a quarter pound or a half pound burger. Imagine eating eighteen of those. Uh, meat wise and that's that's really what we're looking at so our bodies have to adapt Crazy. our stomachs have to get bigger we have to become different creatures if we want to do this and that and that's all because that's all they had was meat right i mean they didn't have the variety that they needed the, the, the yeah, carbohydrates you start out with your trip with a little bit of flour and stuff but after a while you're you're done just per, it's just what you meat. got yeah eat meat and you got to eat a lot of it and we don't want to eat a lot of and that's here meat. in north america that's they were going yeah. up through north america so what carbs we have is what we have and and meats where it's at yeah. All right, good. on to the mulberry bush. Yep. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Plan, plan B, plan C, plan D. Yeah, we're uh, racking our brains now, figuring out what we're gonna do. I think the plan is to get mulberry, so at least we get some sugar. Yeah, we're gonna try to do, go up the river a little bit, maybe just exclusively fish for catfish, because uh, hunting is out of the question now, like midday, so we're not gonna really see too much. So I think we're gonna go maybe set ten lines up the river after we. Get a bunch of mulberries and so it's going to be a berry breakfast we're back to vegetarians again not by choice by necessity think about this place that's good there's no mosquitoes that's bizarre to me to have humid hot humid weather like this with no mosquitoes <laughs> dude you never get that back in canada at this time of year especially with this heat and humidity that's pretty great. So I'm not going to go over there right now. But I'm going to zoom in for you. So we have a backup plan on everything. Zooming in, zooming in here. You can see there's actually a hive of bees. And I, we know for a fact that there's honey in there. So keep watching. We're going to go uh, exploit that resource later on if we need to. The green ones still coming ripe. They're going to be really hard on the tree. They'll stay there. The ones that are really ripe, ready to fall, full of sugar, they'll knock off easily. So we're getting the best berries guaranteed. Not a bad little haul for a couple minutes of work. Well, that's pretty good, but I think we need a little bit more than that. <laughs> yeah, you come to Texas and all you're eating is berries. <laughs> I'm thinking just more berries. These are good. You need handfuls full of them. Handfuls. You need buckets full. Food attracts food. That's the idea. That's why we're here. 
we got to do that again. See why modern man domesticated everything and built collection machines. Oh yeah, it's about tree shakers. <laughs> Otherwise, oh. you'd be doing this all day. Well. The stand is the game changer. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's loaded in here. That's a beautiful sound. That's a better pile. It is. Besides some of those berries is making it worth it. Mm. I don't know if we're gonna get fat eating these, but beats eating nothing. I don't know if we're full, but we've had to fill. We put the tarp out. We <laughs> look at my hands. <laughs> so we're gonna leave the tarp out here, all stretched out, and as the wind works, it's gonna drop more berries, so they're gonna be freebies instead of. You know, we could just eat them off the ground, but they're full of dirt and there's animal tracks all in here. So probably wouldn't be very healthy. Pick up a roundworm or something else worse than that. So anyway, we'll keep this clean and we'll come back and check it. But we need to get a meal now. So we have to go, you know, hopefully we're going to get catfish like instantly somewhere else. We're going to check these other lines first. If not, we're going to another place. Uh, let's set about 10 lines and, you know, hopefully the fishing uh, fishing pays off because, you know, we're starting to, starting to feel it now. But... Now it's only day one, and like everybody says, oh, I can go six days without eating food, and I feel fine. That's because you're, it's because you're obese, man. <laughs> no offense, I'm not overweight. I cannot, you know, make it. You know, I'm I'm around 12% body fat. Once you get below 10% body fat, your body screams for calories. So, uh, you know, maybe you're fine, but I'm not. So this is, I mean, it's a good testament to, or a good test, I guess, to. Uh, keep calories on because you know you come in here at 12 percent body fat it's a lot different than coming in here at 30 or 40 percent i'll tell you that when you got 30 or 40 days worth of calories extra on top of when your body starts screaming for calories and so my body starts screaming real early so i'm starting off on day 40 pretty much all right man we gotta we gotta deal with skunk um i can't leave it in the cage i'm contemplating eating it so i see how this goes um First of all, I, I gotta get over there, close to the skunk without getting sprayed. I've got an old sheet here. What I'm gonna do is walk up on the skunk and make sure it doesn't see me or have a target. Once I cover the cage, then I can manipulate the cage and let it go or eat it. Let's see how it goes. Not happening. I think I think we're gonna have to dispatch the animal. It's just for some reason, I thought not gonna work. So I think we take the gun out and just try to make use of it. If it if it doesn't spray, we can eat it. If it sprays, it's not gonna be any good for nothing. So it's just gonna be how it's gonna go. Well, the really unfortunate part about this is that. You know, this is a bycatch. It wasn't intended to be caught to begin with. Uh, and skunks in Texas are notorious for carrying rabies. Now, you know, other animals can carry rabies too. But uh, skunk, uh, you know, carries other risks as well. So now we got a dilemma. We couldn't release it. It, just, it wasn't worth the risk. It was just too agitated. It would not cooperate. Uh, now it smells like skunk. Yep, so it's it's uh, relaxed and released everything. So, probably not edible, man. Oh, getting hungry, getting hungry. So Bob's down there setting a few more lines to cast a wider net. Uh, they did lose one. Bob and uh, his wife lost one. 
um, but they're biting so that's good. It's just a matter of time before things switch up and turn to our favor, I hope. All we've eaten so far is mulberries, but I, you know, I don't feel hungry right now because I'm kind of constantly walking around and moving and stuff. And it's hot, 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 hot. Summer hot. It's like 30, 30 Celsius and the sun's out. You can convert that on your own. It's a hot day and it's humid. So, which is normal for here. Anyway, just come down to the bank here and it's a real cool view of the river, but it's hard to access. You gotta go up and down the hill all the time. Man, it would be nice to get some uh, calories right now. You know, I'm starting to feel hungry now and I started to think about food. Whew, tough go. It's always hard to get started. Once you get started, I think you kind of get in a groove, build up a surplus. There's hog tracks down at the river, which is promising. We're hoping they actually come up on the property. Bob said they haven't been up here in a long time. Uh, which he says is unusual. So the, the food resources are piling up here, the mulberry and everything else. So it's just a matter of time before they start coming back in here. We'll get one in the trap and that'll be a boon, man. That'll be a very welcome change to this whole adventure. Hey right, guys, you want to eat a skunk? You got to follow some rules. The first rule about your skunk, you got to wash your skunk. The reason is it's going to spray all up the bottom part here. You don't want that on your meat. Let's go give him a drink. Now that you got your skunk washed and clean, you gotta ring him up in a tree. I've got a whole video on this on my channel already, so I'm not gonna do this again. At least not for your benefit. I'm gonna go back and see how we process the skunk in great detail on the channel, man. I would not advise you eat skunk at all. They're not good to eat, but this is survival, and I don't want to lose the challenge, so I'm gonna eat what I got. This is what I got right now. So I will say that in order to do it properly, make sure you get a pair of gloves. Long history on these gloves, Courtney only. You just gotta follow the channel to know the inside jokes on here. Okay, the biggest trick I'll tell you right now, the biggest trick with a skunk, do not hit the glands. Do not puncture the glands, do not cut the glands. Keep the entire thing intact. That's all you're gonna get on this video. I'm gonna skip forward and we're gonna put this animal in the pot. It's gonna be our meal. Nick it or is that just it airing out? I think I just moved it. Yeah, I'm out. We're out. We're out. That's not happening. Not on day one, man. It reeks. It reeks. It reeks. I might. I might. Eyes are watering. I. It smells like burnt tires so bad here. Um, there's parasites all over this thing, man. There's like worms all coiled up, and there's no, there's no way we're eating this today. I'm not hungry enough to eat it. I did it. I did it before. I'm good. It's not enough adobo sauce in the world. It smells bad, eh? That's, that's rank. <laughs> it's not good. No amount of crock pot is gonna make that taste all right. I don't know. If, I, I I don't. I don't know if I could show you the worms on it, but there's. I mean, it's. You know, it's not su super graphic, but there's like worms balled up like we had in our bear. They're like. Uh, they're moving still too, right? You get a whiff every once in a while, eh? Oh. oh. All right, so that, that's not happening. We gotta go get some cactus. Something or other, right? All right, man, so all throughout this process, I've been talking to Bob about local laws, customs, rules, regulations, etc. He said, you know, a skunk is a nuisance animal all up and down Texas. He said, you know, in, in Canada, we have values. Our values are don't waste edible meat. So I brought my Canadian values here. They're not working out. Um, but I, then again, I wouldn't consider this edible meat. It was impossible to get it outside alive out of the cage without risk. Um, you know, they're nuisance animals here, plain and simple. A uh, landowner is, uh, has a right to dispatch animals, you know, as they see fit. And these are, you know, they're vermin here. Uh, there's no value 
in a skunk, they're more than plentiful. Um, we're not eating it. We're just not going to eat it. We're back at the crawdad, crawfish, crayfish, all that junk. Uh, it was supposed to be our backup famine food, and we're in it right now, so we're going to grab the crayfish, crawfish, crawdads, whatever you want to call them. That's all we got, man. No. Got a few bait fish. You're kidding me. Gotta go on the hooks. Bait. Bait. We got bait. I don't think uh, crawfish would go too far anyway, as far as calories. Do what? They don't go too far with as far as calories for uh, crawfish. No. Not unless you got some butter. <laughs> like butter. You got some butter to go with that? Some sausage. There's one here. One the cob. So we've been running around, running around, running around. You need calories, man. Two guys in there. So our lines, every time we come, they're stripped. And uh, we haven't been sitting at the lines because we're trying to scramble to get something else going. But those uh, crawfish aren't going to go too far. So it'll be nice to get a catfish. <laughs> Anything with fish at the end. It's crazy. We, we come here yesterday. We set one line and we got a fish in five minutes. But it was dark. It was almost dark, right? Or it was yeah, twilight. It, was, it still had power. Yeah, but the, yeah. that's when they're most active, right? Fish hour, yeah. Fish hour. You catch everything all at once. Whereas now, but then we, we came to check the lines this morning and there's nothing, so. But we had no bait. So they're not hooking themselves, that's for sure. Feeling the low sugar, though. Man, we can't buy a meal out here. Used more bait than we have in anything in return, by far. Put these guys in a live, but they're not gonna lie, live for very long once they hit that hot water, so. Uh, less than a second, man. Instant death, man. That's how all your seafood's done. Yeah. You actually usually throw them on, like up, up north, they throw them on ice directly. Yeah. They, don't, they don't kill them individually, they throw them all on ice, I think. All of our, up all north. Of our do this. Right. Uh, crabs, lobsters, all go in the pot. Fresh. Same thing with uh, oysters, clams. Those are all living whenever you throw them in. You want some spice in there? I threw a little bit of Tony Satries in there. Well, I was wondering, they had, had a little bit of tinge, I always rust. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of iron in your diet. <laughs> Cast iron. It doesn't hurt you though. That was a pretty tough day, man. We got, well, we started off with the rattlesnake. That was pretty good. A little bit of meat. Yeah, the line's little. dead. We can't, can't, can't land a fish if we had to save our lives with it. Not yet. The day's not through. The yeah. day, it's gonna pick up. Yeah. Right? We were saying that the crawdads, they, or they basically fed them to prisoners. Back in the day, in time decades ago, in last century, it was seen as cruel and unusual to feed crawdads because they were feeding them out to the prisoners in the in the jailhouses up and around Louisiana. Well, it's like a bug, right? It's a mud bug. <laughs> is what they call it. Freshwater freshwater lobster yabbies. There's a ton of words for them, but crayfish, crawdad, crayfish. Crayfish is Canadian. But perception these days, people drive hundreds of miles for a good crawdad boil. Alright man, so that's it. So our uh, skunk didn't work out. Bailed on the skunk? No, did not work. And uh, the cactus ain't too bad. And we got our, our famine food here. So, sorry guys, that's it for today, man. See you next time. The saga continues. Hey guys, I'm back in Canada and I've been doing a pile of editing. I wanna keep this video series rolling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release a video every Tuesday and every Friday. This is gonna be going on for about two and a half months. I have 19 episodes in total. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is support the channel. What I want you to do, if you can, is please watch the video entirely from the beginning right to the end. YouTube is tracking all sorts of uh, data in their algorithm 
and what they want to see is a high watch time or retention time. So if you guys can do that, you like the series, and you want me to continue doing that, that's one small way you guys can help. Leave lots of comments down on the bottom, not just one, but a bunch of them, that helps. Of course, hitting the like button is super easy, you can do that too, and sharing it. If everybody shared it to five people, it would get big really fast. And lastly, if you want to support it monetarily, you can buy a t-shirt. I'm hoping to get some more t-shirts up. If the t-shirts are available, I'll provide a link. If not, you can always offer a PayPal donation that will come directly through me. To me, you can also hit the sponsorship button. It's a new uh, feature that YouTube has added. You click sponsor and it's a monthly uh, subscription. So I think it's $5.95 or something like that. And uh, ongoing supports the channel. So guys, I hope you enjoy the series. Um, if you guys want me to continue doing this, you want me to go to other different places, uh, let me know. If you have access to land, um, you know, private land, and there's a lot of hunting, fishing, opportunities, trapping, that sort of things, and you want to invite me up and a guest or a couple, a couple guests, let me know. Shoot me an email for that. I do not always get to all the comments to do my best, but if it's, a, uh, if it's an important thing like, hey, you want to uh, hook me up with some land and you've got it ready to go, let me know. So uh, I'd like to explore and open different doors and avenues and see where this, uh, this YouTube thing and the survival wilderness living thing takes me. So I would definitely let, welcome some, uh, some offers of getting into new lands all over the world. So let me know. Can you smell that? It smells like burnt tire. Yeah.